Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. So we are back from the Granite Games. If you saw our last video, you saw the prep, the day, the last session in the gym, and also when we got to Minnesota. And then you also saw a little bit of day one from there. So today what we're gonna do is we're just gonna recap all of the events. And in my latest Instagram post, I kinda just put out that, you know, I didn't execute the way that we practiced and what we planned. And we wanna talk a little bit about that. So in the end, that's on me, but we are excited to take on the last chance qualifier. Let's let's go through these events. Yeah, we're gonna give you guys a little bit of some insight where we were, what the weekend was like for us, um, some of the behind the scenes, and even touch on our hotel evacuation. So let's start with event number one. So event number one, going in was a snatch one rep max so originally it was a six minute window you got to build up I was super pumped I was planning to do like an EMOM or even an every 45 seconds and get in a minimum of six lifts that quickly changed to one lift every 20 seconds I missed a couple in the back so I actually opened at 150 and I think I snatched it so quick the announcers didn't even realize I did it I heard a lot of people saying they thought I missed my first lift it just it went up super easy so I needed to be a little bit more confident in myself we jumped to 170 and then I hit 180. Um, yeah, it's typically a stressful event for us. And when we got a, when we had a six minute window, which is what the event description was, it was a little bit of pressure off. Um, and kind of last minute, I think for spectators, they changed it to every 20 seconds or every, what was every? Uh, you had 20 seconds to lift. Uh, you had 20 seconds to lift and you had three attempts. So that adds a little bit of pressure to an event where we're already kind of doing some damage control and the girls were un really usu strong. unusually strong at this event. Um, but for us, that was probably our best executed event and couldn't have gone any better. Um, you hit 180, which was even above kind of what we were shooting for. We were thinking 175 was kind of the goal weight um, and potentially 180 depending on what other people were lifting. So that really was best case scenario and we started off we started off well. Mm -hmm. Then we went to event two and event two, they shortened the run. So it was supposed to be a 200 meter run between each, but with the way we moved our dumbbells, we actually never ran a full 200 meters. I think the first run actually was around 130 meters and it went to maybe 145, 160. And the last one was close to 200 meters. So what that meant was it meant less rest before you pick the dumbbells up again. The field was also super hot. So they were awesome and they pushed us back to start later to make sure we weren't in the heat, which was super cool. However, the field was still radiating and I think just sitting around all day made me a little bit antsy. So I went with our original game plan, which I executed great in practice, but with that minimal rest, because the run got shorter, I went out way too hot, and then I just blew up and everything fell apart. I think I was on like my plans D of plan A, B, C, and D. Yeah, I think um, not knowing the exact details, but the workout description was a 200 meter run and then your thrusters. We were assuming that it would be down and back on the field because that's 200 meters, and that each run would probably get a little bit longer, if anything, that there would be a standard run and then maybe moving your dumbbells forward a few feet each time. So we had set up a game plan with that in mind and we did not adjust and we should have. We should have uh, learned it on that one and adjusted for the rest of the weekend, yeah. but we didn't. So and then the next morning, event number three was the sled event. That was super fun. Again, there was another adjustment. They changed bar facing burpees to lateral burpees over the bar. Really didn't affect anything. Um, I thought this event was super fun. The torque sled or the tank was awesome. It was super challenging. Again, the heat definitely played a role at the end of that one. Just the amount of exertion you're putting forth when the heat's just radiating off of the field. But I feel like I executed this one to plan and it was go hard from the start and just try to hang on. Yeah, this was this was a different experience also because we were now from the outside looking in. Uh, even though the snatch went well, we kind of racked up some points there. More or less, like it was an unusual feeling being in the second heat from the outside looking in and even more added pressure not knowing what the top girls were going to be doing. So it was pretty much like we've got to go hard. Who else was in your heat that pushed you? Kendall, you? Kendall. Vincent. So they went really hard and I think they both pushed each other harder than they would have if each other weren't in that same heat. And that one turned out really well. So she did an awesome job on that one. And um, yeah, it was super hot out there. You'd go to the stadium and it would feel hot outside. But when we would walk out on the turf, it was like insanely hot. And it seemed to affect some athletes more than others. For us, it, it definitely was challenging. Um, I know like Spencer Panjack or Saxon Panjack was not only just had a phenomenal performance and couldn't be a nicer guy, but also just seemed to be more or less unfazed by the heat. Um, he was crushing it and then coming back and was like just normal. So that was super impressive, but it did seem to have a different effect on everybody. Event number four was the handstand ski, handstand push up ski, handstand. Super cool event. I do feel like I executed pretty well on this. 
It was a short event. The leaderboard kind of spread out also, so there's some like kind of expert people who were able to skew the leaderboard or kind of take points from this one. But I don't know, it was such an oddball event that I don't know that we could have really done too much different. I think it was similar to practice, maybe a little bit. Yeah, that one just kind of was what it was. We were expecting that. I think it came down to, in the end, a lot of us did get through the handstand push-ups in about the same amount of sets. So a lot of it came down to how hard could you pull on the ski erg and then hang on to it on the last handstand walk. So I think just working on a little bit more power output on the ski would really pay off for that one. Next event was back to back. the back to back, um, which we were actually pretty excited about. We did that one in practice. Uh, the first time, you guys saw that probably in the last video, we practiced that one a couple times and thought we had a really good strategy down. Um, but we were going in the middle of the day and the temperatures were even hotter. And we pulled back on what our sets and game plan was and it just, it wasn't enough. Um, that was a hard lesson learned. That should have been a really good event for. And as well as the toe to bar D-ball step over, that one in practice, she looked phenomenal. But going too hard on the wall ball, um, GHD workout just kind of put the brakes on everything and it was damage control after that point. Yeah, I definitely, I knew I was in trouble in about the second round of the back-to-back. -back. So the wall ball target was 10 feet, which they didn't announce ahead of time and usually girls throw 20 pounds to 9 feet, so we practiced it to 9 feet. Um, the target was also, not only could you, you didn't have to hit the target, but you had to hit the number in the center or they no repped you. So like if I get the ball to the bottom of the number, I'd still get a no rep. So that was kind of a bummer and I suffered a lot of no reps and then I started to fall apart mentally just a little bit in that one I think because I was getting a lot of no reps, it was really hot and we pulled back our plan even more than we had in, intended to and I was still failing. So sometimes it's just a hard lesson learned and I definitely learned that one on the floor. Also when I finished, I felt like the turf didn't even look even. Like I was walking and I felt like it was just completely uneven and so my vision was starting to get a little bit blurry and I was so worried I wasn't even gonna be able to get my grips on within that 90 seconds that I had to walk back. That I was just like, you know better than this. You should have had them on ahead of time. You should have been prepared. Um, so that was a lot of shoulda, coulda, woulda and that definitely did not go the way that we planned it. But sometimes these two things just make you prepared for future things or just help us grow and learn because what it came down to was us not executing the way that we know how to. Um, also, this was the third day and there was previously just so much sitting around. Uh, everybody had to deal with that and it was super convenient that the hotel was right next to the venue, but there wasn't a ton to do and it was super hot out. So um, going at seven and nine o'clock at night was definitely just different. It was different for everybody, but sitting around all day in the hotel room was just like, what do you do? You know, we'd go for a walk, then we'd go to the pool, then we'd go to the workout room and then we'd go back to the hotel room and it's been 40 minutes and we've got seven hours to go. Uh, we watched a lot of softball uh, and on the third day there was a hotel evacuation because apparently a mulch pile outside I guess would be spontaneously combusted which I am familiar with like mulch piles can keep in a ton of heat. Uh, the hot mulch inside gets really hot and it can actually caught, catch fire. And I think one of the small trees outside either started smoking or kind of catching on fire and there's like a dozen cop cars and ambulance and uh, fire Everybody trucks. Everybody on the front lawn. Uh, so that was something to do for a little bit. It ended up not being that big of a deal, but the entire hotel was evacuated. Yeah. And then finally, the last event. So the last event when they announced it, I was like, oh gosh, this is gonna be a challenge. It turned out to be really cool. Everyone, all the girls did an amazing job with it. It was a 20 calorie row into two legless into three rope climbs into nine devil's press at 70 50 pounds and we were also able to clean and jerk which was really awesome and then a 45 foot or 15 yard double dumbbell overhead walking lunge which i've done a lot of overhead walking lunges but i've never used two dumbbells at that weight so i was proud of the way that i executed i knew what was going to happen was probably people are gonna go out really hot and get to those lunges and really that's what it came down to. It came down to who could keep the dumbbells overhead longer and also not fail, because if you failed, you had to go back to that previous section. Yeah, we knew we knew going in that that was gonna be probably the most challenging workout of the weekend. So um, going into that event from the outside, looking into a qualifying spot, we weren't super hopeful. We knew anything could happen and we were prepared to fight, but um, that was not one that we were you know, overly confident in. And she did a great job. We broke up each one of the uh, sections of the overhead walking lunge and she didn't fail, which we were really happy about, um, but just wasn't, wasn't quite enough this weekend. Um, but we didn't want to shy away. We didn't want to keep putting videos out for you guys and keeping you posted. 
we still have a chance here in a few weeks for an online qualifier and we're hoping uh, that, that goes well. Christy is extremely fit and we aren't going anywhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm thankful for the last chance qualifier. I'm thankful for everybody that helped put the Granite Games event on. We, we were prepared. I believe I am fit and I think we just didn't execute the way that we should have and that happens and it's a tough pill to swallow but it's also a really great learning experience for both of us. It's been a while since we've been on the competition floor and at a live event and congrats to all of the women who qualified, like they earned it. They, they competed and they put up the results and the performances that they needed to to punch their ticket and I'm hoping that I can do the same thing in this last chance qualifier. So thank you to all of you who yelled my name when I stepped up to the start line, who commented on the videos just wishing me luck and telling me that you believe in me because all of those comments don't are read, like they don't go unread and they mean so much and literally I can't thank you all enough and I know Patrick feels that way as well, it's just the continued support and we love sharing our journey with you, this is just a small bump in the road that we were hoping to avoid but at the same time it will hopefully make me a stronger more mentally sound athlete and us a stronger duo all together. Brad's not over yet. We appreciate the support guys.